there's a game breaking mission in this game and it involves the character Biff when you go to save him on A8. I just wasted like two or three hours playing and I'm just gonna reload it because of this. I'm gonna talk about the multiple different paths you can take and the rewards and outcomes that's associated with them. So Biff will eventually make a distress call and I think it's based on time. So they're sending out a cavalry to attack him on A8 and you can intercept that as long as you end up on C9 on May 29th or before as they'll end up killing him on May 30th. So what you can do is do it auto resolve so you don't actually have to fight him. Just make sure none of your characters actually die and don't take too much damage. If they do, you can just reload the save and it's pretty random. So sometimes they'll die, sometimes they won't, and sometimes they'll barely take any damage. If you don't intercept this, then you'll end up missing out on a major part of the story as well as the green diamond. But there's more of an issue at hand here as most people like myself just ended up going to A8 to see what was going on there afterwards. And that is a huge mistake, not because of the battle. So after winning the battle with Biff and saving him, I ended up doing a little traveling here. Covered the whole east side there, I went up to A12, which you should do as the quest will reward you with a giant diamond. And I went over to the mine there and spent, I don't know, an hour or longer doing the mission there to take over the mine. As I was coming back, I stopped on a little unmarked tile and saved this girl from a bunch of bandits, which she then went back to the refugee camp, which I haven't been to yet, so I figured I'd pay a stop there and see what was going on. Immediately stated that something horrible had happened to the refugee camp, and I was thinking, what happened? <laughs> I don't know because I haven't been here yet. That notified me that the girl I just saved had been killed. Shortly after that, I got an email stating that I unlocked the legendary mercenaries and I didn't quite know why. So with the first playthrough here, I convinced Biff to give the diamond back to Chimbaranga. And I did meet him initially previously. So we already had a relationship and some people said they just never found Chimbaranga ever and it's most likely because of this quest here so if you end up saving biff he'll give you some intel on a conspiracy here that's a major part of the plot and this is required for the good ending apparently we'll reveal who the major is and he'll trigger a second part of the storyline as well as killing all of your side quests or potential of having any of the side quests done as well as making the attacks on your establishments way more intense apparently and this can be avoided by just not going to A8, but you still would have to intercept the party that's going there by May 30th. Apparently, you can just let him sit there for a few weeks without actually going over to A8 and defending him. And just like do a bunch of the side quests and check out the refugee camp, as there's a lot of side quests associated with that apparently. So if you convince Biff to give the diamond back to Chimarenka, he'll help you out with the defense as well as providing you with a huge 50 point loyalty bonus to the area. Ready to go unnoticed, Biff, yeah? you are a comrade to us, and yet you stole from us. The green diamond you have taken belongs to the people of Grand Chien. Give it back. No. Biff Abscott. It is mine, I tell you. My own, my precious. Yes, my precious. Biff, that doesn't belong to you. Do the right thing. You're right. It's precious. But it only brought me bad luck. All right, I'll give it to Chimaranga. Very noble of you to give back what belongs to the people of Grand Chien. We shall forever remember that, comrade. So what I did was position Fox, Reader, and Livewire on the back roof there with sniper rifles. I just had ice roaming around and... Larry and my other mercenary up top on the other roof, that's to the right side if you're facing. You can set up on the billboard on the very top, which initially I did, but I was having some mixed results as they were just focusing on those guys and they weren't coming back far enough to even attack all these raider mercenaries that were supposed to be helping me out, but they didn't really do much. Layer with grenades and Ice with the thing were the main stars of the show though. Ice just has such great mobility and 
decent strength to where he could just go around assassinating people with the thing. What's nice about Ice is he's got lightning reflexes, so anytime that anyone tries to shoot at him initially, he'll just drop down to the ground prone and dodge a bullet. There are some elite mercenaries that match his stats but better, but they're more than twice the price of them, so if you don't have them, I highly recommend them. Hold up. We Check this out. It. We're still alive! God, that was scary. I mean, the situation was complicated. Good thing I was around to provide tactical advice. Biff, man, you're motivating. I mean, when you're whimpering and running around, even I feel like a badass merc compared to you. If you don't have the thing, it's the best melee weapon in the game, and my previous video covers on how to get that. Option B is to tell Chimaranga finders keepers, which will make him attack you and Biff. I just let him kill Biff, and I wanted to see what the diamond was about. I was shocked when I saw that it was worth $50,000. Once you defeat Chimaranga in battle, you'll have the option to either kill him or spare him. If you spare him, you can convince him with the right wisdom or leadership to take up a relationship with the madame at the brothel. If you take this route, you end up getting 20 loyalty to the area. But this is not the best outcome that you could have, as if you do end up meeting with him before coming here the second time, apparently you'll end up joining forces with him. And if you convince him to marry her and retire then before coming here, then apparently he'll give you his mind and his army when he retires. You leave me with no real choice. Retire or die. All right then. I choose to live for the revolution instead of foolishly die for it. Yes, I intended to deceive you and continue the good fight. But what do you want from me? Just give up everything I fought for? Isn't there any chance for my revolution? What? Uh, Liliane is a very nice woman. But I never thought about that. Do you think that she would have me? You old fool. She loves you. And you never noticed that because of your stupid revolution. You have crushed my Maquis. And my revolution. And now you want me to trust you with something so personal? What is the point in struggling your whole life if you cannot get to a place where you can rest? Perhaps you are right. Perhaps I needed a wake-up call. I guess I should put the gun down and take a chance to start a new life. All right, I'll talk to Lilian. Look, it's never too late to talk to the woman you like. You'll start a new life, you'll see. So this fight involves like four or five different waves that come at you and it only gives you like 30 seconds in between each fight to reset up. So what I did in the very start was just set down all my proximity mines that I had and took out the first wave pretty much pretty easily. So apparently there's a third option here and Chimaranga won't be upset about taking the diamond if he doesn't arrive in A8. And the third option definitely sounds like the best one, as you'll get the diamond as well as the intel. So what's required to do that is having both Larry and Smiley in your group when you talk to Biff, which are former associates of his. I only had Larry in my group, I didn't have Smiley yet. I was trying to get him, but initially I killed Molly, so I had to go back and kind of got sidetracked. It's one of the bad things about an open world scenario is there's too many variables, but most games nowadays let you know if you're about to progress to the next part of the storyline and kill any side quests that you currently had going or were going for. So you can bring the diamond to LA and donate it to the museum. That will reward you with only 15 loyalty to the area, but it will also give you three deployable militia to any part of the area as well. What have you found? Wow, is this... Can it be? I need to double check, but I'm pretty sure this can be no other 
but the long lost pride of the Ajani. It is a priceless jewel, but it is also much more than that. It is an important piece of my country's history. I cannot thank you enough for this donation. We're giving it away? We're giving it away? Okay, <laughs> that's completely fine. I think I need to lie down. Normally, the $3,000 relics only give you one militia group to deploy. Still, I definitely don't think that's worth it. But there is apparently a glitch to where you can put it on a mercenary group number two and give it with mercenary group number one that doesn't even have it and still get the credit for it. Hopefully this saves you a lot of time and frustration. Appreciate it if you hit that like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.